What is hemlock? Can we use it? Is it a good thing? Carry on watching and you'll find out. Hi everyone, Tuva here. That was a short call upon the goddess hen. And the reasons for that is not only is it the time of the year for hen, if you like to celebrate sowing, it's also, even though not the time of the year to grow it, a very interesting plant. Hemlock. Now people say, why would you use hemlock? Well, hemlock has got quite a good thing going for it as well as a bad thing. It is native to the British Isles, even though it does grow all around Europe now and also in America and places like that. But the original plant was renownedly known in the British Isles. It grows wildly in places like anywhere where there is wet land. So you might find it along places like um, canal or rivers. You might even find it along railway tracks. It grows and can grow to eight foot tall. And it comes from the carrot family or parsley, would you believe? it can be mistaken and that's where the danger comes in. So you have two types of hemlock and that would be the water hemlock which is completely innocent. You won't get hurt with that one or conium maculatum and that is the poisonous one guys. That's the one that stands up to eight foot tall and has clusters of little white flowers very much looks like a little bit like Alison if you know what that looks like. The stems are very thin and wiry and the leaves are very pointy and fern like. It also has purple splodges and was known to be the blood of Socrates. <laughs> he had the unfortunate pleasure of drinking this lethal poison knowing the outcome and he did that rather than end up in prison. It grows in abundance around late spring and early summer. So if you're walking about, take a look, you will see it, there's lots. You might ask, how does it affect us as people? It's one of the only plants to contain five alkaloids. And those five alkaloids are the most poisonous things that you could ever want to ingest if you drink it you are done for basically and the things that happen to you when you start to drink it so you will have a headache on the onset after an hour of ingesting it you will then feel loss of ability to use your body parts a rapid heartbeat and dilation of the pupils in the eye or the eyes you will not be able to move, you will be paralysed, your muscles, they will then in turn, turn to a type of a mush inside and bleed into your bloodstream, which is pretty awful. But it doesn't stop there, guys. No, your mind is perfectly alert. You are perfectly conscious. And so know what's happening, but because you can't move, you can imagine the panic that must be going on inside your mind at this time. Your then kidneys will fail, your respiratory system will start to fail. And of course, the slowing down of the heart. 
and death will occur. No one really knows unless they've ingested it how long it takes. I would say probably within five hours you would be dead. And it only takes six leaves to kill a full grown human being. Now that is one drug to be wary of. The worst part of the plant for the most poison is actually the seeds. So if you're going to pick this plant and use it in your practice, I would suggest wearing gloves of some sort while picking them. Because guys, they can be used in magic. When you're dealing in magical problems, things that's going on in your life that needs and you're not dealing with it properly or you can't get the right spell to work, this is ideal. It's powerful and so the witches of the old days would use it. They would instill it into oil and it would be used in consecrations, it would be used in initiations, it would also be used to stop something happening, put a complete break in something, it could be used to stop a man's potency. Now of course we haven't got the recipes for all that, these are the things that were done in the very ancient times in folklore it speaks about them but of course in this day and age unless you are one evil person you're not going to want to cause impotency in a man it's also used for chastity in the woman again we don't know quite how why do we use it then well it's ideal to anoint sigils it's ideal for any spell work as I just mentioned that you need a powerful outcome in it can be used quite safely if you put some of it into oil and you know people use different oils now I always use a base oil whatever I can get at the time so that really doesn't matter crush it down put it into the oil and make sure you wash the pestle and mortar after because obviously if you're going to be crushing lots of stuff up you might get some of it tainted in with the other and I probably didn't need to tell you that but I like to make sure people know what they're doing. But the other magical use of that, it paralyzes. You're dealing with a situation that you can't put a stop to. This will finalize it. There are many ways and I'm sure be on the internet or in books where you can use it in a certain way, always making sure that you are being very careful. As an ointment, as I just said, the witches would use, they would put it upon their skin and it would give that feeling of flying in the air. It would give that sensation of you're actually off the ground. They also knew how much to use. And if you're ever going to try it, guys, a tiny amount, just on the little bit of your finger on the skin. I wouldn't if you're unsure because you don't know how long it will last and you don't know if it's done too much what it will do to you. But witches also used it to attain out of body sensations so that they could shift and go to other realms. And so it was used by many different types of witches and people in the cultures that use drugs to move into different types of consciousness. And that is how witches would use it in the old days. Now there are probably many witches today that are using it and using it very safely but you have to do your research as to find out before you do it just how much you can actually use. Now you might ask how does that link in with Norse spirituality? Well again it's grown around there and it's probably used but it is being mentioned 
in the Eddas. Obviously, Snorri had written this, so there's a little bit of Christian links to it because that's who he was. But it talks about a king, King Hadingus, while he was at his meal in the hall, taken by an old woman or a woman that was very frail looking with very thin skinny arms and she had a cloak and she took him she threw him to the ground and she got upon him and they disappeared now she took him on a journey to hell but she also had in her arms the flowers of hemlock now what it had to do with this and I believe it was how she got them to shift that she was actually not a little old lady or a little woman that she was in disguise because the gods wanted him to know something and so they took him on a journey to hell and he went through various things and along the roads that they were walking upon was also hemlock so you can see there was a significance to it but cutting the long story short he was then brought back to his wife and he knew that they were going to be invaded by these treacherous men that were coming for them and was able to stop them and so it was renownedly used as this sort of narcotic that would give you insight that the gods would give you insight. So it was linked also to Norse practice. I'm sure me as a Seda practitioner will use these sort of things when needed. And so I have no doubt those in the Nordic countries would also use it. In the past, I would expect that they would have done so obviously not in good ways because back then they needed to get rid of their enemies and I have no doubt it was used on arrowheads and all sorts of stuff you know once you got hit by an arrow of it it was in your body and you would die the English witches would have linked it to Hikate, Lilith or Kali but we as Nordic practitioners would use Hel we would use the goddess of death. We could use other gods that were also known for death. Any death deity could be used. So we don't have to rely on what others are doing. You use your own mind on this, what relates to you. And that is why I called upon hell today to be present while we speak about one of the growths of plants that will grow in hell. A good flower maybe concoction that you can put upon your altar even just in the oil that you're not going to get hurt from but just to put reference to that fact that it's a form of death that takes you on the path to hell. A meeting place, crossroads for Hikate so many connotations to do with death so if you want to use this plant to break bad things happening it can be used in a good way it can also be used for getting rid of terrible illnesses not by actually touching the person obviously with it but putting it into say a healing bag you can put a little bit into that be used then to halt the condition in its tracks or you could also use it in fertility spells using that oil on a poppet doll for example it can be used in many ways in a good way as well guys so don't always think that these things are so bad because they're not always when the planet or when Midgard was brought to being, it was beautiful and everything on it was good and bad. We have polarity in everything. And so you have to remember that what people say about something isn't always what it is. Used in the right way, hemlock can be okay. Used in the wrong way, it can be disastrous. So always remember that guys. Could be used 
for astral traveling. So if you want to learn how to astral travel, just that little tiny little piece, or even just putting it on your altar and not touching it by lighting a candle next to it, you can then sit there and just absorb the energy that comes from it. That could be enough to shift you. Just remember, put it in a safe dish that you're not going to touch and just only use it when you really need to. Just put in a small piece in each room of your house if you haven't got small children or animals that can get to it. If you can, you could put it in a closed glass bottle or something that people can't actually get hurt with and just leaving that when I done it I had a long bottle which was dark in colour I put it inside I then put a candle in the top and let the candle burn each day now just being in that bottle in that room was good for keeping anything negative out putting a stop to anything bad so really good purification putting a little bit outside the ointment on your door frames again stopping anything you don't want coming in and I'm going to leave it there guys thank you to my new subscribers I really do appreciate it this channel is here for you guys so I hope you enjoy what you see on here and if you have any questions whatsoever just leave me a comment below if you guys want to know more about hell I have a video which I'll put the link above for. I'm also in the process and I'm going to tell you this now because it's in about a week's time. I'm going to be on a interview on another channel. When it happens or just before it happens I will give the link for you all to come and watch. You can either watch it live or afterwards but it will be probably 10 o'clock in the evening in the British Isles and I think in America where this is going to take place it will be about four-ish in the afternoon but anyway I'll put the link there for you when it comes to me to give to you but I just thought I'd mention it thank you also to all those that are there for me and always have been I really do still appreciate you guys too because without you where would this channel be and so have a lovely weekend and I'll be back next week so wherever you are whatever time of day night or evening it may be I wish you the best ever House of the Lang.